I just want to share some thoughts. Um, I'm, it's something that really, really annoys me. It's about cinematography and more specifically color grading. Ever since color grading became digital and it became easier to manipulate the colors, filmmakers have done it uh, in great effect. But we're also doing it a lot more than probably necessary. And there's an increasing trend in making things dark. I think it can be done too much and kind of suck the life out of film. And the best case I know of is the Harry Potter series. All eight of them goes on a spectrum of getting worse, in my opinion. So I like the four first a lot more than the last four. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. So let's look at the first one, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Let's look at the colors. So this is just a flash of all the colors. Um, you can see there's clearly greens, there are blues. There's greens in the outdoor scenes. In the Forbidden Forest, there's bright blues. And at the end, there's some dark scenes. When uh, Harry Potter picks up his wand for the first time, we get this vibrant glowing light with this warm feeling to indicate the magical atmosphere. And I think this is a really nice use of color grading. There we get a flashback and it's kind of tinted blue, very green, it's on the Hogwarts Express. And like this, we see the castle for the first time and it looks like a painting, it's really magical. Inside the Great Hall, there's a lot of lights, there's warmth in the magical world. In the Quidditch scenes, there's, yeah, you can see just the uniform. It's red as we would see it with our own eyes. And, and the scenes with the uh, Forbidden Forest is tinted like this blue style. And the end is kind of darker. But still, there's colors. And here, the same you can see with the Goblet of Fire. There's a lot of color. The Goblet is really blue. The Yule Ball, of course, is great. In the waters, there's kind of a green tinge. And when Harry Potter and Dumbledore goes down into Dumbledore's memories, there's like this blue tinge when Harry uses magic. And then we, of course, have the duel between Voldemort and Harry. Great colors. Then this is some screenshots from the Half-Blood Prince. And it's just so gray. Like this is the whole movie. Like everything is just dark and sad. And I don't think that's the point of Harry Potter. Even, even if it's a dark movie, there's no point in making it soulless. Yeah, it just, it almost looks like a black and white film. And here we have something special. This is every frame of every Harry Potter movie. Uh, condensed into a barcode. So to the left, all the way to the right, we have the films. Here you can see Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, and at the very end, Deathly Hallows Part 2. And this just shows you how colorful they are, the first four films, and then it just gets slowly muted. They just stopped using colors. And I think that's because they felt they have to go darker, and they took that literally. Here's again vivid colors from Philosopher's Stone, which I think works well for this magical world. And here we have behind the scenes of the very last movie. And here you can see Dumbledore's brother, Aberforth, in his robe, and and it looks warm and the colors look real. Just looking at his like red violet robe, I would look at him and think, oh, that's a wizard. It's like, this is what our eyes see. You could color grade it a bit, sure, but you wouldn't really push it to an, a natural extent. And let's see how this shot looks in the movie. This is basically the same shot. And you can see we'll, we lost all the colors in his robe and the warmth and the light is just totally gone. And this is the whole movie. I mean, this is the four last movies. And I think it's so boring. They just blend into one palette and nothing sticks out. Nothing is, uh, there's no scene I like remember well because it's all one mush. When this trend started was with Alfonso Cuaron, which I think is a brilliant filmmaker and made one of the best movies. But he kind of pushed this dark style a bit too heavy. Understand why he did it. He wanted the kids to grow up and make the world a darker place. And I think it works great when we got the scene here with Ron and the Dementors coming. Because it literally, the description in the book is that it sucks the life out of everything around you. You just feel sad and depressed. In that scene, you could just pull out the color and almost make it black and white. It works with the mood. And like in the werewolf scene, this looks great. The moonlight and it's uh, the werewolf is in darkness. It's kind of 
it's a lot more scarier that way. But I don't think an everyday shot like of Hogwarts should be this dull. I mean, I've seen a lot more greens and a lot more vivid blues in just the sky outside my window. Why should Hogwarts be more depressing? And that's kind of sad because when I imagine scenes from Harry Potter, from from all the books, they're they're magical, they're colorful, they're a lot of colors in the magic magic they use, and just scenes that are breathtaking. And you don't get that feeling with these dull colors. And I'll just show you uh, an example. Just imagine the end of the Half Blood Prince, where Dumbledore and Harry is trying to get a Horcrux. Outside, there could be normal colors. And when they get into that cave, that magical place that Voldemort has to protect his Horcrux, we can get this green light and it just oozes of evil and magic. You wouldn't see this in a real world. And then even closer, this bowl of magical liquid, we can have the greens really take over the shot. And then when Dumbledore drinks it and then the Inferi comes to attack them, you would have this great magical fire that Dumbledore conjures will just cut through that green magic like good versus evil and it would be really visually pleasing and it wouldn't make the scene less dark less scary I just don't buy that and let's look at how it is in the movie here it's just completely dark uh, almost no colors just a little uh, light from the tip of their wands and when they get over there this is the magical bowl where a horcrux is protected by magical fluid. It doesn't really give off that vibe. And then at the end, thankfully, they managed to get the fires the correct color. This could have been a scene really etched into my mind if they used colors more creatively. Because now in the end, we only get these gray, boring ass scenes. Look at this. It's so depressing. And I just don't buy the symbolism. Some people say it's like, it's this post that I'm kind of reacting to. Uh, oh my god, look at this, how it starts off with reds and oranges and purples, bright colors, and then it gets continuously darker towards the end. It's so fitting to the story. And then there is a strip of white at the end, which has to be King's, King's Cross scene. And yes, I checked, it is. And it's just light in a dark time, which is extremely beautiful. So people think this is a nice thing. It just saps out the enjoyment of watching the last four films. For me personally, I, s I don't think that a dark story with dark themes should literally be dark. It seems to me, if you rely on that, it seems like a weaker filmmaker. I think a great filmmaker can have a scene be very colorful, but still feel sad or dark or something like that. I just wish that they would give Harry Potter the color it deserves.